Hi everyone, um, Dr. Weber and I are going to show you guys how to set up your ice bath for the freezing point depression experiment. Um, one of the pretty much only reasons that anybody ever gets bad data in freezing point depression lab is because they completely disregarded all of the notes that we wrote about making an ice bath. It is kind of a lame reason for not getting a good grade. Um, so we are going to show you how to set up your ice bath. So first there's an image here. Um, you want to layer your ice bath like you would do a layer cake or like a seven layer dip or something. You're gonna have a layer of ice, a layer of salt, a layer of ice, a layer of salt, all the way up through your beaker. Um, you're going to use a 400, I lost the test tube, a 400 milliliter beaker to make your ice bath. And then you're going to end up taking your test tube and putting it in there to cool your sample. Uh, so, this whole layering thing that we're talking about. You're going to have a 30 milliliter beaker and there's going to be just a giant tub of salt. And you want to fill your entire 30 milliliter beaker. I'm going to dump salt all over my table. You may be asking yourself, why didn't I just fill up the 30 milliliter beaker? Exactly what I'm asking. I'm asking that too. Okay. It's just, it's just sodium chloride, I promise. <laughs> okay. So, we have the 30 milliliter beaker. None of you saw anything. <laughs> okay. Um, 30 milliliter beaker. And I'm going to start by putting in some salt. I'm going to take my ice. And that's my first layer. More salt. More ice. It's pretty monotonous. But right. very easy to mess up. Yes. How are you doing, Dr. Weber? Doing great. It's really important for you to know that we don't you don't need to be stingy on the salt. We have lots of extra salt. It's better to have more than less because this will make your ice bath even colder in order to get everything to pre freeze pop uh, properly. So in order for you to have better grades, it's it you it's really important to have the best kind of ice bath you can make. Okay. So the reason we're adding salt to the ice bath is that while cyclohexane itself will freeze in just an uh, ice bath with water, um, your solution is not going to. Because remember, this is a freezing point depression experiment, so the freezing point of our solution is going to be lower than the freezing point of our pure solvent. And also, this is kind of a freezing point depression experiment happening in the beaker as well. The salt is going to bring down the freezing uh, point of this as well. So this ice bath is actually quite a bit colder than zero degrees Celsius. Um, and the more salt you add, the colder it's going to be. So if you're having a hard time um, getting good freezing data of your solution, I would add more salt. So, you know, do not be stingy. Um, the other thing about this is that if you've ever made ice cream at home, you may know this, but once you uh, put ice and salt together, it kind of starts to get rock hard really fast. And you have to somehow squeeze this test tube into this ice bath, which is gonna be a challenge. Um, and we don't want you slamming your test tube into the ice because it's made of glass, so that's not like, I wouldn't call that ideal. No. Yeah. No. So, you're going to create a hole that's big enough for your test tube. Test it out before you, you know, have all your sample in there and everything. Okay, so now I have my test tube inside my ice bath. But the next step um, is I need to add some water because at this point, the ice is touching my test tube. Um, but it's not going to be touching it evenly. In fact, I'm actually going to add a little more ice. So there's going to be um, cold air and ice touching my test tube. So I need to add in a liquid so that the entire thing gets cooled evenly. So it doesn't take a lot of water because um, there's so much ice in there. I used maybe 50 milliliters just then. And uh, now my entire solution of cyclohexane would be under the water line. Um, it's also important to note that like we're using a lot of water here and stuff, but if you get water inside your test tube, that's another easy way to destroy your experiment. So um, make sure that the water level comes above the line of your cyclohexane, but not above the lip of your test tube. And you're gonna clamp that to make sure that's gonna happen. So now I have a nice um, slushy ice bath. Um, if this continues to melt, which it will because it's warm outside and it's probably going to be warm next week, um, you're going to need to slowly filter out water 
and just and, replenish. Yep, and every time you uh, dump some water, keep in mind that you're also dumping out salt. So you're gonna need to add more ice and more salt. Um, because of that, you may wanna take it upon yourself to take some of the pitchers that are in the lab and just go get ice. When it looks empty, um, just go get some because you're gonna need it anyway. Yeah, if you follow those rules, you will have a delightful ice bath and a successful experiment. See <laughs>